Hello friends and welcome to this video. So in this video, and it probably has some intelligence in title, um, but this will be about an improvement I made to my amp. And I think it's a very, um, it just gives us clues. I wouldn't say this is now a, a, a hard fact, but I'm, I'm sort of starting to sniff here that, that there's that these changes that I made to the power supply improvement, to the power supply are, are actually influencing the quality of playback in, in a particular facet, which is detail and transparency and nuance when there's loud passages or strong bass lines. And um, so that I'm going to share that in this video, how, what I changed to my amp and, um, and how I got, the, got those improvements. Now the one thing to know with this amp is this is as otherwise I made the reason why this sort of fault existed and it started exhibiting a bit of strange sound and it wasn't that good was actually because what I had I had two driver tubes that were highly insulated from the rest. Um, yes, they share the same um, uh, um, rectifier tube, but otherwise they have their own choke, they have their own capacitor bank, they've, they're and, and it's a 40 Henry choke, so they, they've highly insulated from um, from each other and and from in general also from power variations. Now on top of that, these two tubes, output tubes, are actually in counter phase. So um, when the signal is positive here, the the signal there is negative. So that would cancel out any dips in the B pluses further. However, of course, this tube actually being a lower plate resistance and being lighter loaded, of course, draws um, less power than the, the tube for the high high output, the mids and the highs. And this is just the tube for the lows. So, however, I made a bit of, um, and now I'll tell you how, what improvement I made to the power supply that led to this improvement. And, um, and then we'll draw some conclusions because I think it's a very good reason to actually have a two channel amp. And I can speculate maybe this is also the cause of a lot of amps actually having losing detail during loud passages. And the reason why you often don't notice so much is because um, loud sounds have a large masking effect. So uh, it's natural for some details to drop away because the, the loud sound will just overflow those. However, what I noticed in here after this improvement, that two things that were say wrong with this amp, and uh, by the way, thank you, Janos, um, because you discovered, uh, you actually made a comment on uh, the sound clip that I posted a couple of videos ago, that um, um, you heard during loud sound passages, uh, there was something wrong. And I also had heard a strange modulation in the sound that just wasn't quite right. And because I know which boo-boo I'm, not boo-boo, but I, I sort of, the experiment that I did with the power supply, um, with these sharing a capacitor bank, that that could well be the cause of what I was hearing. Um, what I didn't expect really is, is how much it improved the sounds once I, I fixed it. And... Um, so what did I do? So as I said, these two were sharing a capacitor bank. Uh, the two drivers were completely uh, isolated for the, for the rest. And so what I did is I actually implemented this. So this is the power supply uh, setup. And by the way, the, the, the driver tubes also tap in here after the first choke that is shared by all. And they have their own, each of their own choke going off. Um, at the moment, these two output tubes, they share the same, um, they share the same uh, choke, but um, I might actually also double up on that one and separate it further. Now, I used one of the ch tricks from Janos from Real World Audio that he had shared in one of, I think, his Darling uh, Audio, uh, the, the Darling Amp videos. And so what I have done is decoupled the, pow the power supply for the both output tubes, so the mid and high tube and the low tube, type 50, by actually using a diode. Um, and this way, any changes in the voltage here are not um, being um, being put through to the other capacitor bank. So this way, both tubes are independently fanned. Now, where this for the rest comes into play, of course, in the charging circuit, is because these are in, in counter phase, the power draw here will be at a time when this is not drawing power. So these are not really fighting for the same um, current, uh, for the same uh, end. As a result, the, full, the voltage um, changes here would be less than if these were in phase and they were actually both charging because you would have some kind of competition. But I think with the current construction, with these tube in counter phase, 
um, this is actually not an, uh, you get quite optimal charging. Um, the other thing, of course, is that often, and I'm using a Scotty there now, I'm using actually a, a high quality diode here. It's, it's only 100 volt diode, it's usually used for um, 5 volt circuits and so on. So, um, if you have a very good deck or something, you often power, uh, use those diodes. But uh, the diode here, of course, never switches off. Um, so unlike a rectifier where, you, where this switching behavior, even if you bypass it by with a tube rectifier, you can sort of hear that there is, um, you know, as real tube people would say, a sand in the circuit. But um, this silicon, because it never switches and is on under... Uh, more or less constant current it, it, it is um, it, it you can't tell that this is actually in the circuit so the, the audio the, the the sonic influence I couldn't detect by adding these however the sonic influence of course that I did notice is that I got the two improvements that strange modulation um, disappeared and also what Janos noticed during loud passages suddenly the transparency and the, and the detail and everything just remained very um, constant so I was highly surprised how const how consistent the the, 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 the mids and highs were and, and I hear, heard basically nothing so in conclusion one of the things I must draw from this is that even because they were first sharing this that the 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 the, 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 the change in B plus while not that much audible in the base, you know, when, when these two were sharing the capacitor bank, was actually definitely influences uh, the, the signal and the clarity of the signal and the quality of amplification. It was just very obvious that, that the change in the B plus caused by the Type 50 was actually influencing the sound here. And so... You know, I always wondered, for example, what the fluctuation in B plus on a tube actually does, and whether it was audible. But I think it it just really is, and it and it's just not a good thing that it actually changes because officially it shouldn't change too much because, you know, yeah, the plate was you know the operating point shifts slightly, but not that much, and uh, yet it is actually very clearly audible because when I made it made the change here. Um, well, there's a bit of wind. The door is open. Um, but anyway, uh, um, so I'm now so sort of thinking that this hard to get quality that your amp doesn't react to um, uh, to any um, you know strong and loud sounds um, can be solved by a dual channel amp because all the lows which actually you know where the majority of the energy in the music I don't know what it is it's it's probably something like ninety percent. Of 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 um, the energy that goes to your speakers is is below 500 hertz, and only 10% is above it. So by splitting this off, the the, the main fluctuations that you get and the main cause the, the things that you almost need to optimize the whole power supply uh, with to optimize power delivery, and and it causes the most fluctuations. The the the, 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 the that type of power you have now insulated that from the mids highs and i think you know i'm speculating here but i think i think that is a major reason um, what a um, dual champ dual channel amp has in in, in, fa in favor of a single channel amp is that you just completely can remove that thing and the further you remove this i mean i could imagine that these two driver tubes and maybe the mids high would actually run on a uh, with a different rectifier tube, with a different power supply sh circuit, and then you just optimize the the, fil the filtering um, for the for the output tube separately, and you organize it separately. Um, you know, maybe you can even use solid sta state or a rectifier to just do this stage, and the rest you do with tubes. Um, yeah, sort of along those lines. Anyway, that's it for this um, topic. Um, I hope. For the tube amp builders and designers amongst you that it uh, might be an interesting um, concept i think it's uh, definitely something that i'm going to keep an eye on in, in with future amps or further development of this amp uh, is just to see how much of the sound quality is actually down to the power supply because i think it's it's, it's extremely um, significant in especially single end on amps um, 
but um, yeah, this, this gives us another clue. So I hope you found that interesting and um, I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, all the best and see you next time. Bye bye.